Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm here to show you how to integrate OAuth for Square and highlight some best practices along the way. OAuth is a way to securely delegate account access to an application without needing to share account login credentials. To start, let's show what an OAuth flow looks like and then break it down. Let's pretend I'm a Square seller wanting to connect an application. We have a button here that says Authorize, so let's go ahead and click that. We're redirected to Square and see that it is prompting us to grant permissions to access parts of our Square Seller account. I'll go ahead and click Allow. Now we're redirected back to the application. So let's break down the different components of that OAuth flow. There is the user, the client application, the authorization server, and the resource server. The user for a Square OAuth flow would be a seller. The client application would be your application that you're integrating OAuth to. And the authorization server is where users are logging into Square. Finally, there's the resource server, which is the Square API. So now that we know all the components, let's go over the different stages of the OAuth flow. There are basically three stages, which are authorization, the callback, and requesting a token. First, in the authorization stage, we send a user over to Square to grant permission to our application. Then, in the callback stage, Square redirects the user back to our application with an authorization code for obtaining an access token. Then, in the final stage of requesting a token, our backend server uses that authorization code obtained in the callback stage to request an access token. So, we've covered the layout of OAuth by surveying all the components and stages. Let's go into how you implement each stage to make a complete OAuth flow. Here is what the base of our authorization URL looks like with connect.squareup.com slash OAuth slash authorize. Since this is a GET request, all of the parameters for this request need to be set as query string parameters. Here we have every parameter, which includes client ID, scopes, locale, session, and state. The first parameter of client ID is where we have to put our app ID, which we can find in the OAuth section of the developer dashboard. Next is the scope variable. Here we are explicitly showing all of the default scopes that are requested if you don't set this variable. But a best practice is to always be explicit in which scopes you are requesting. Also, another very important best practice is to always set scope to the least privileged permissions required for your application. That means you should avoid requesting more than what your application would need to work with Square. You can find all of the permissions you need in the technical reference for each respective endpoint. The next query string parameter is locale. Square detects the appropriate locale automatically, so this parameter is optional, but should be set if your app already knows definitively what the preferred locale should be. Here we have the session parameter, which is set to true by default. This default means a seller with an active login session is not prompted again for a password. The best practice is to explicitly set the session parameter to false in production. Many sellers have multiple Square accounts, and this helps ensure that the seller is authorizing your application for the correct Square account. Finally, we have the state parameter. The state parameter is a string that is passed to the Square authorization page and returned back to the callback URL defined for your application. You should set a cross-site request forgery, or CSRF, token for this field. A CSRF token is a unique, random, and unpredictable value generated by your application server. When the state parameter is returned to your application's callback, your application should verify the authenticity of the state value. This technique helps to mitigate cross-site request forgery attacks. Now that we've seen how to construct our authorization URL, let's look at how to handle the callback. Before we can authorize a user, we need to set our callback URL, also called the redirect URL, in the developer dashboard. Let's navigate to our application, go into the OAuth section, and put our callback URL in the redirect URL field. An important thing to note for testing this in Sandbox, you can use localhost with HTTP, but you are required to use HTTPS when using OAuth in production. The query string parameters that you can expect to receive on a successful callback are code, response type, and state. If the authorization was denied or there was an error, you would receive back the parameters state, error, and error description. For the success callback, you should be verifying the state matches what you had set when sending the user over to Square during authorization. If the state matches, then you can use the authorization code that was provided to make a request to acquire an OAuth access token. This takes us to the last stage of the OAuth flow, which is requesting a token. To see how this works, let's go into the API Explorer. Let's select the OAuth API and then the Obtain Token endpoint. 
This request is a little different than other Square API requests you might have seen before. The main difference is we aren't setting any values in the authorization header. This is because we will be passing everything we need in the body of this post request. To get an access token, you'll need to provide a client ID, client secret, and redirect URI, which we can find in the developer dashboard in the OAuth section. Let's go grab those who put it in here. Now that we have our client ID, client secret, and redirect URI set, we need to indicate what grant type we are making a request for. Since this is for obtaining a new token, we'll set this to authorization code. Finally, we can put in our code that we got from the callback. Now we can run this request and we see that we got a successful response. Now we have an access token that we can use to make API calls on behalf of the authorized seller. Since this token gives us access to the seller's account, we need to make sure to follow best practices when we manage, use, and store the access token. First, we want to make sure that we're only performing our OAuth operations and Square API calls on a secure application server. This is typically referred to as your backend. You should not be using or storing access tokens on a mobile or web client. You should also be sure that when you're storing access tokens, that you are encrypting the token when storing them in a secure database. Our next best practice is to ensure that your tokens are valid. This means refreshing your access tokens in a timely manner. OAuth access tokens expire after 30 days, which means you should refresh them sooner than that. We generally recommend to try refreshing them every seven days, since that gives you plenty of time to identify and troubleshoot any issues that you may be encountering. To refresh an access token, you would use the same obtain token endpoint that we showed before, but you would set grant type to refresh token and provide the refresh token that you got when you originally obtained an access token. Finally, you want to be sure to handle revoking access tokens. A seller is able to revoke access to their account from the seller dashboard, so you should subscribe to the OAuth revocation webhook event to detect when this happens. Additionally, you should offer a way in your own application for a seller to disconnect their Square account using the revoke token endpoint. You can do this by doing a post request to the revoke token endpoint and using your application secret in the authorization header preceded by client. Then, you need to provide your client ID in the body along with either the access token or the merchant ID. If you want to revoke just the access token, there's also a Boolean field for revoke only access token to let you specify that. That about covers integrating OAuth. To recap, we covered the flow of OAuth, which goes through the three stages of authorize, callback, and request token. We also covered some best practices to keep in mind when integrating OAuth into your application. Remember, when authorizing a user, keep your scopes to the least privileged permissions. Don't ask for permissions you don't need. Set session to false, so sellers sign in again to the account they want. And make sure to set a CSRF token for the state variable to mitigate against CSRF attacks. Then, when handling tokens, always encrypt them when you're storing them in your database. Subscribe to the OAuth revocation event to know when a user disconnected your application. And finally, ensure your tokens are valid, refreshing them regularly so they don't expire. You can find more information in our docs on integrating OAuth and best practices to reference. Happy coding.